uh, you guys really liked the tough book short that I did. Um, we're up to almost a quarter million views and it's still going. So two big thumbs up. Hey, so let's talk about these tough books uh, for a minute. Uh, I've got a lot of questions in my hundreds of comments about why A, I have four of them um, and B, um, are they really as good as I'm saying? So I'm gonna go over some of those features for you. Look at how dirty they are. Dirty is what happens when you work in a shop environment. So this is the CF53. This is my newer one. And this is a CF52. And this is a 32-bit box running Windows 7 Professional. I also have, in some situations, the need... Where'd it go? One of my drawers down here. Oh, I got two of them in one drawer. This one is a 32-bit CF52. I just don't like the screen on it because it's got this weird touch screen with the pen on the top. And I, I don't use that one very much, but I did get it um, specifically for some programs that didn't want to run on 32-bit. So that's, and then this is the old, this is the dinosaur. This thing is so old, but so awesome. Old CF29. Um, I'll boot that one up in a second here. But basically, tuning software in general isn't coded very well and a lot of the companies don't really support anything but the most current operating system that they're they're designing for so if you end up with a car that comes in that's got some engine management from you know 1997 in it you're probably gonna end up needing some sort of an older software option the other issue with older software is a lot of it and a lot of the interfaces to the cars requires let me flip this around here a serial port this is a traditional 15 pin serial port now a lot of people are like well they make serial usb to serial adapters well i've tried and used every not every but a large variety of usb to serial adapters over the years Here's one, um, there's I'm sure more in this drawer and more in other drawers. But these things, they sometimes work and sometimes don't. And when they don't work, you end up on the dyno with the customer's car where you're fiddling around trying to get your serial to USB to work instead of tuning their car. They don't wanna pay for it, but you don't wanna give away your time for free. So instead, just get a laptop that has a serial port and it's not a big deal. She went to sleep on me. This one's getting a little cranky. It's real old and it's real well used. Even this one, the newer CF53, and this has an i5 dual core processor. So it's, you know, not the slowest thing in the world. Um, it, whoops. Where are you at? Oh, this, uh, here you go. It has a serial port as well. And so I can plug it into older engine management's AEM version ones, um, older Optronic stuff, um, pretty much everything. There's, there's a lot of serial port interfaces still to these days. Um, old chip burners, we can get down here into the dinosaur drawer. Um, we got chip burners, we've got uh, old Diablo device. All this stuff uses serial, and when it's on serial, this one's USB, that's cool. Um, stuff that's on serial, old, old EFI Live, that was USB as well. Um, but some of this stuff is still serial AVO. There's, I got all kinds of things down there. We can come, I got more. And this is what I'm talking about is you have just drawers and drawers and drawers of old tuning devices. Um, SCT power flashes, some Diablos, a lot of those were serial only. Um, I've got some AEM version ones down in here. Um, I've got a FuelTech FT600, that's nice and new. But, oh, we've got the old Game Boy, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just I get super excited about some of this stuff. Oh yeah, uh, Power FC, FC Data Log it. That's a serial only. There's a lot, Ostrich, Motes emulator, oh, that's USB, that's cool. Um, old Honda, serial, Honda S200. Trying to get, here's a Honda S200 serial to USB adapter that also only works about half the time. Uh, more serial to USB adapters because I've tried, like I said, I've tried a ton of them and they work occasionally, but they're not consistent enough 
go these old cob dongles. Um, they're not consistent enough head to get out. That's an old version one access port. Look, serial. Um, yeah, they're just not consistent. And because they're not consistent, it's not something that I want to rely on actually working when I'm on the spot. And if you're only using one software suite, if you're not trying to jump between software suites like I end up doing all the time, you can probably make a USB to serial adapter work for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot up this old one here. Um, same, uh, the same plug, the same charger, this guy, Panasonic OEM charger here. Cords all frayed out. This thing's been through a war, probably. It probably actually has. Same charger for all of these, including that other one that's in the drawer down there. Um, they also all use the same batteries. So I've got good backup marks. Um, this one is does not hold charge. You know, batteries are one of those things you're gonna have to go through. This one says has a bad cell, so it's gonna work for like a half of it and then stop working. Um, that's fine. Okay, so we plugged her in, power on. This one takes a minute to start up because it's old and cranky and tired, but it will fire up. There it goes, see look. This is the one that I dropped in that video too and used as a doorstop and a wheel chalk. There it goes. So anyway, I'm assuming the little battery on the board is dead. I don't even have a battery in this one, I don't think. So that's why it's super extra cranky. Everyone's like, don't plug this thing into the internet. Well, I wasn't planning on it. So people are saying, why don't you just dual boot? Why don't you just put a partition on this and have everything boot up to the one computer? And again, I could do these things, but I don't need these other computers very often. And so I don't really see the point in using up some of my I don't really see the point. I've only got 456, 465 gigabytes. I don't have a whole lot free. I need to clean it out anyway. But if I was to try to dual boot, it's just gonna use resources that aren't really necessary to be used when 95% of my work happens on this computer. And it does everything that I need to do to make whatever power necessary on a car on the dyno here, um, as well as going out and street driving a car, going to the racetrack, making changes, all of that can happen with this computer. And if I have an older piece of software, I can boot this one up. Um, you can see this one, I've been doing some, uh, some open source tuning on this because this being that it's 32 bit instead of 64 bit, the open source environment works better for Subaru stuff anyway. And these ones being 64 bit get a little bit cranky with some of this older, older stuff. So I do a lot of tuning on this for certain models and everything else happens on here. So really it's just these two computers that I switch between and the 32 bit to 64 bit is the big difference between them. I don't even check my email on this one anymore um, because of some security issues. So pretty much everything I do online is with this one. This is just for taking care of the cars that it needs to. And you can see this thing's been through some battle and got a corner chipped off there. The backlight's kind of weak. I've actually replaced this backlight on this before. Never had an issue here. Here we go. All right, we got some Adobe Arm, whatever. But we booted up into Windows XP. Um, I was told I should run a check disk on this. I think it's KDSK. Let's see if it does it. Warning, F parameter not specified. So we're doing check disk. So um, I'm just curious. This has a traditional style hard drive in it, not an SSD. This one also has a traditional hard drive, not an SSD. This has an SSD and, oops, that one has an SSD. So this is probably gonna take forever. We're only at 3%, but I'll just, uh, we'll just fast forward to the end of the video and get you my check disc results. Military use, obviously, these are, they're gonna primarily use this form factor. So this is the rugged, this is the semi-rugged. Both of these are semi-rugged. And then they actually have a light version as well. But this is the like mil spec form factor with its craziness. So the handle, the handle is a game changer on these things. The fact that you can just 
pick it up and carry it and take it places. Um, you know, there's that whole joke like hit it with your purse. Well, if I'm a mechanic and I got my little mechanic purse here and I whack something with that, it's you know going to do a little damage, but not a lot. But if I hit something with this, I mean, we're talking some serious damage. So, um, other comments from people. Actually, let me just let me just pull out pull out my phone here and hop into the comment section. Let's see, best tuning laptop. All right, we're, at, we're actually at 218 right now. Let's go down to the latest comments. Okay, that's effing cool, cool. Uh, burglar coming through the window, Panasonic Toughbook. I know a guy who uses a keyboard, Raspberry Pi, and small screen right next to the gauge cluster. So this kind of stuff works. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely something that you can do if it's your car and you're not tuning it for a customer. But when you're tuning a car for a customer, setting up all of that is something that most customers aren't gonna wanna pay for and it's not really a good use of time. Um, on the Windows XP one, consider an SSD since dropping and abusing it might affect the hard drive. So these Panasonics have a cool feature on the hard drive style ones where basically the hard drive, when it detects a certain G load, will actually stop the drive. And that's why we're doing this check disc over here. We are now 69% complete. So either it sped up or it found a bunch of bad sectors and was able to jump across them real quick. We're gonna find out how much of that hard drive is smoked and how much isn't. Um, I had one, loved it for electrical testing, setting this up. Not gonna lie, they're badass. Skipped Windows 8, smart choice. Yeah, well, um, let's see. Need to go swimming with the fish, Panasonic Toughbook. That's actually true. Um, I haven't tested this like exclusively, but all of these are water resistant. Um, again, I don't really feel like drowning my laptop to prove a point, but if I needed to, I suppose I could. I have definitely spilled things on them. I mean, if you look in those keys, they are nasty AF. Um, oil, coolant, methanol, uh, race fuel, things like that. Um, in fact, I've definitely sprayed methanol over all of these. Uh, let's see, funny how things they aren't so tough if you throw them across the room. So I've, I've mentioned this in a couple of the comments. We actually had uh, this computer was on the fender of the race trailer. Just I had it set on the fender and somebody went and backed up the trailer to load the car and the trailer bounced and it fell off and got ran over. And that is what broke that. So you run this thing over with a race trailer, you might crack a portion of the screen. That was years ago. Uh, ThinkPad, don't care. Um, the Nokia of laptop, laptops, Call of Duty tough book. Yeah, it's, most of the comments are, so this one, uh, open install OpenBSD. OpenBSD is, um, it's a it's a Unix kind of derivative. Um, it's it's like in between Unix and Linux, and actually it's much closer to what Mac OS runs. Um, you could install Linux on all of these. They they have uh, full Linux builds for all of the Toughbooks, and it would work for being a, a computer. But again, the tuning software for all of these many oops, that's not the right drawer. That's not the right drawer. The tuning software for all of these many different different hardwares and softwares that we support, they they aren't necessarily well coded and they certainly aren't gonna spend the time to code them into Linux. So you're gonna have to run some sort of a virtual machine or whatever they call it anyway. And again, that's just extra complexity and doesn't really seem to be worth it. Um, he's amazed at one battery charger for four laptops. Just wait till he learns about multi-boot. Again, multi-boot would work but the other thing is sometimes the technicians in the shop need a computer to do something on. And so they'll come and grab one of the tough books um, and it works. Uh, I never knew door stops had so much tunability. Yeah, well, I broke one in Afghanistan after I fell 35 feet from a helo onto my back. It was in my pack. I sent it to Panasonic and they sent me a new one. <laughs> yep, um, I used mine underwater once. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. So the Dell Rugged Extremes, I see a lot of people talking about these. I, I am not opposed to the Dell Rugged Extreme. I've never used one personally. I buy all of these refurbed. So if you go on Amazon, Tough Book. So you just type in Tough Book here. You'll see, and I don't like Amazon so much, but um, there's a GAC. So here we go. Here's a, a Tough Book Panasonic CF53, very similar to this. 
i5 4310 this one might actually be a little bit better processor eight gigabytes this one has 16 256 i've got 512 windows 10 pro but yeah 439 so the specs you know it's not it's not a gaming computer by any means it's not supposed to be but those specs will run any and i mean any tuning software you could ever try to run the actual the most um resource intensive thing that i use is my actual dyno software itself um, the software that runs the dynamometer here is is a little bit more software intensive but i actually use that on a, a desktop pc um, because if the wi-fi drops while the dyno is working you, you're not going to have a good day um, but yeah more panasonics here's another cf53 14 inch display blah 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 16 gigs terabyte hard drive see that's a terabyte ssd uh, 464 so they've come up a little bit i think this one was around 400 when 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 we got it but and then here's a much more expensive one the fc55 these ones i'm not 100 percent sure have a serial port so if you don't need a serial port and you want a little bit better system specs you can spend more money but anyway as you can see they're not as expensive a lot of the comments that i got here just said that they're super expensive i could never afford one or why would you spend that much money on them i mean they're 400 bucks and it's a tool i've got fifteen thousand dollars worth of snap-on boxes and if you're going to complain about a 400 hundred dollar laptop that's actually what's going to make you money then you know you might want to reconsider your priorities um let's see marine corps portable electronic maintenance application that's fun yeah, everyone talks about the multi-boot. Again, it's not really applicable for what I'm doing to multi-boot. Oh, we're done here. Okay, uh, free space, files, zero kilobytes in bad sectors. Everybody, you see that? Can you read it? Zero, zero kilobytes in bad sectors. This thing's been dropped, been thrown, been stepped on. We're gonna do this one next, because this is the one where I was saying I ran over it. Come on. We're gonna run command here. Command. C H K D S K. So this one's also a traditional hard drive, and we're gonna see what that one does. Yeah. So zero bad sectors. These things are stout. Stout. I'm trying to get it to blue screen. I don't think it's gonna though. There we go. Zero kilobytes in bad sectors on this one as well. There we go. Zero kilobytes. So the standard drives that everyone says, don't get a tough book with a standard drive if you drop it. This one's been thrown off of stuff. This one's definitely seen some, some hard use. So um, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Panasonic builds a good laptop. Standard drive doesn't matter. Oh, time to get back to tuning. In case you're wondering why I'm not fond of touch screens, this is what my hands look like after just strapping something onto the dyno. So if I was doing touchscreen stuff, you can just imagine this is actually a touchscreen. So it's got a little stylus. But uh, I guess if I was using the stylus, it'd be one thing. But, but using your fingers on this, it's just gonna just gonna become a giant mess. 